I got this Olipop yesterday and I got it to have a dinner last night. And then I went to open it last night. I was like, no, I'm going to want this in my podcast. Uh, when we're setting up, <laughs> I swear, every time I think about how I want a vintage cola Olipop, not sponsored, wish it was. This is the best flavor, you guys. You should just get, like, purchase a pack. I know, but if I do that, I, w- I won't, like, they won't last. Well, just, like, one every day. Like how we have the... the um, bubblies. Yeah, the bubblies in there. Ooh, I want yeah. a bubbly. Grab bubbly. Maybe I'll pause. Do the... That's a good one. It's a good, like crispy aluminum. I got myself a blackberry bubbly. Super good. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, bubbly is like carbonated water, sure. But these, I mean, they do say they're plant powered and like they're relatively like a cleaner soda alternative. But I think it might just be my lack of faith in American packaging. Like, mm. I don't believe you. No. Even when things reading say this. like, yeah, when things say natural or let me, can I see the can? Yeah, natural caramel flavor. That's what probably that not mean? good. If it's caramel, say caramel. What it's is natural not. caramel flavor? And it's probably not necessarily like yellow 30 because they would have to say that, but it's something still synthetic. Otherwise, yeah. they would just say caramel. Again, mm. it, it could be worse. I'm not cracking open a soda or nothing, which, hey, do your thing. Right. But... That's why I won't buy them because if I, if I buy them, I'll, I'll drink more than one a day. Like, yeah, I just know myself. You see what I mean? Like there's a, there's like buzzword. There's, I swear. Yeah. And everything's TM. So that means it's not like an ingredient. It's a brand and you just never know with shit like that. I'm surprised that's able to be a thing. Those are asterisks. What do the asterisks mean though? Oh, the Ollie smart. Ollie. Oh, that's probably like their probiotic their, blend. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this has what? prebiotics. Oh, it's extract. The, the asterisks is, is oh, oh, oh extracts. I don't know. It's okay. interesting. But God, they are delish. I want to meet someone who is like in the production side of brands like Bubbly, Olipop. Um, what's Pop- the other Poppy. one? Poppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like what it what it what's the formula look like actually look like? I've had the poppy fruit mm. flavored ones, but they're ones that are like trying to be the soda. Like they have like a I think they have like a cream soda one. I think they might even have a root beer one. Ass. Mm-hmm. That's where Olipop really stepped in and like actually made an alternative to the big soda brands that taste pretty on point. Right, right. Like the Sprite is pretty good, right? I don't remember. No. Uh it was a little too limey, I think. Okay. Yeah, because honestly, normal Sprite is not. No lime. No lime. <laughs> the only thing limey about it is the packaging. Yeah, the color. It's just like sweet. A I just bit like, of citrus, I, but, yeah. like the carbonation specifically of like a glass bottle 7-Up is, oh, it's so good. It's so like refreshing to me. Nostalgic. Yeah. It's like. Such a treat. Anything yeah. in a glass bottle is a treat. Yes. And like the the opening process of it too. I don't know. And I don't even know why it feels nostalgic because it's not like we grew up in the 50s. Like right. we've always had cans. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Movies? because they're just rare, like more rare. Right. You don't really get a pack of them at the no. grocery store. You get you get your cans. You know what's next level? Mini cans. I love mini cans. Oh, the like the half ones. Yes. Like we have like the V8 one right now. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We, we have a mini can V8 in our fridge. That's been there for since my mom was here. Yeah. October. October. We'll never drink it. We'll never drink it. Maybe you know what? We're saving it for a random day that we want like a bloody like a cheap Bloody Mary. I, every time I go to like get rid of it, I'm like, well, it's unopened. They yeah. don't go bad. And it's right. not taking that much space. No it's a mini can of V8. Like, it's just sitting there. But I guarantee if we got rid of it. We'd be like, oh, oh you know what sounds that good? <laughs> Should have had a V8. But yeah, the mini cans are the best. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> happy Monday and happy New Year. It's freaking 2024. If you're listening to this on January 1st, I hope you had a safe and fun ring in of the new year. Um, we obviously are pre-recording this, so hence doesn't the lack of like, enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel like New Year's. And you know what? Like even... It felt like the holidays leading up to the holidays to me, but once Christmas Eve and Christmas hit, it didn't feel like the holidays anymore. Not at all. It didn't. There's it's it was like 55 almost 60 degrees outside of New York. Like I could have gone yeah. out in like a long sleeve if I wanted to and just that. 
Yeah, last year I was actually know. like pretty cold. Yeah, it's something's not hitting with the holiday season. We actually already took our holiday decor down. Absolutely. Thank we God. Did. No, I'm so stoked about it. And it finally feels normal in here. Like we we did it last night. So this morning we both were like, oh man, it looks so much better. And I was telling Alex, I didn't realize the like subconscious the stress, mental space that it took that, up. That fucking tree yeah. and all these silly little Christmas things we had going on. Our house really wasn't that Christmassy, but like it wasn't. But we had we had like, enough to yeah, call it we decorated. Had like little knickknacks around. Right. I hated it. Towards it the end. wasn't us. I mean, I don't miss it. That's for sure. Yeah. And when we put it up, so we put it up. I like. I think it was like the first week of December. It was fun. It was fun and festive for like once. The first week of December hit once everybody first started watching Christmas movies and like it started getting cozy outside and we had that one holiday night that I yeah what did we watch uh the Cameron holiday Diaz? yeah that was like the peak of the holiday season for me like that one night and like the French dips and all that and then after that I was like okay now we're just playing this holiday game that like everybody has to play literally so I'm glad it's over yeah me too I'm excited for this episode uh we have a few several different kind of like prompts Prompts. if you will that we both answered for like our intentions for the new year and things we're leaving in 2023 and yeah I'm excited for this I had I I had all intention to get ready today too like Alex is all dolled up but I started my period and just one of those days it's not bad right no 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 good good I I started cramping but I took something I took like I think I took like 400 milligrams of ibuprofen so we're coasting um but yeah, I, I did want to dress up though to like maybe bring in the new year with like not looking like I just rolled out of bed, but you I know, did literally just roll out of bed. <laughs> I put on this vest. I'm yeah. It's okay. Who my cares? Period, period underwear on right now. Like wanting to get dolled up is out for 2024. Thank you. Let's start there. <laughs> All over social me- social media, we've been seeing people do their ins and their outs for 2024. So we wanted to write our own. We don't know what each other wrote. No. So should we do like all of our ins first and all of our outs or do you want to go one and one or like one in one out one in one out let's do one in one out okay mine don't necessarily correlate or wait sorry one in one in one, one in, in one, one in, in and go one down out. all of our ends and, and then, then go- switch outs okay yeah you guys yeah, you guys yeah, get, you it? get it is everybody ready it. okay <laughs> my in, my first in this is in no particular order this is literally just what popped in my head same. My first in for 2024 is ordering dessert when I'm out to eat, even if I'm full. I love that. I I always say like always order dessert and I'm always like a dessert person, but I just when I'm full, I take that as an opportunity to like, nah, I'm OK. Thanks. I don't even want to see the menu. Yeah. But more often than not, when I do order dessert, it is now like my favorite thing on the menu for that restaurant. Right, and right. it's a reason for me to go back. And it's so fun it's it's so fun they're usually like the lower priced items on the menu yeah. even if it's just like a scoop of gelato or like right a small, uh, and chocolate chip cookie they're usually delicious and i right. usually like what i re- dishes that i remember from restaurants that are in like my queue in my head are usually d- the desserts like yeah. the date cake from black market liquor in studio city if um, you are in the LA oh. area, if you're even in the Orange County area, go go up to Studio cake. City. It is so fucking good. Everything else on the menu is incredible too, but this is like what you think of, right? Right. When That's you think true. of a good dessert. I do not stop thinking about the cheese. I'm actually going again on Monday. The <laughs> cheesecake from Rule of Thirds in Brooklyn. It's so good. It's me and my boyfriend's favorite dish, and it's like the rule of thirds in general is like very special to us. Yeah. But the dessert there is what brings us back yeah, every time. Yeah. And it's, I, I just want more of those. And I just like need to, you know, I need to get dessert when I want to get dessert. <laughs> that reminds me of, I, th- I think I t- like read this to you when I first saw it, but when Bob Saget died, John Stamos, you know, in an interview or whatever, he was talking about the last time he had seen mm. Bob Saget and they were at dinner and it was not too not too uh, far from when he actually passed away. And Bob Saget's like, oh, like, do you want to get dessert? John's like, nah, nah, we don't need it. And he's like, come on. He's like, nah, man. Like, you know, just like you're saying, ah, I don't need it. And I'm full. Right. And in the interview, John Stamos is like, the things I would do to have gotten that dessert with him. I'm going to cry. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's my period. It's my period. I get it. Um, 
And at the end of the interview, he was like, the get way the I dessert. live now is get the dessert. And I love yeah. that. So I think I that, that you could take that as shallow or as deep as you want. But Absolutely. Both are valid. Um, okay. Ends making those doctor's appointments. Mm. Enough said. Ooh, scary. Exactly. <laughs> but it's in. So it's but cool. Do it. It's cool to do. So uh, my second in is day outings during the week. Love that. I did it a lot more so when we first moved here just because I was like in the mode of forcing myself to see New York. But now that I'm more so in my routine, now that we've lived here for over a year, I have just fallen into the, okay, I don't know if I've said this before, but I work West Coast hours. So Mm. my, I don't think you've said that. No, my work week is I work 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. most days. Eastern time. Eastern time. Um, so that my full day is pretty much on the clock, but I do have my mornings and I haven't been taking advantage of my mornings as often as I'd like. I have just fallen into the routine of getting out of bed later in the day because my day doesn't start until later in the day. Nothing's pulling you out of bed. No. So I want more day outings because I have the opportunity. Like I have a full morning that I could take advantage of. You know, what really triggered this one for me is I started noticing that when I go downstairs in the afternoon, I say good morning to the Ooh. the doorman. And they're already like, what? And it's good like afternoon. and it's like 1 30. But 1 30 in my head is 10 30 because I'm on West Coast hours still. Yeah. So I it feels like morning to me. I get it. But it's not. So I want to get my mornings back. Come to Orange City with me. Eh. <laughs> or not. I tried. Okay, my next in is high protein intake. I just want to eat more protein. Yeah, and eggs. It's really how? fucking good for you. I don't know. Just however, I feel like uh, even when I'm eating comfort meals, I tend to, and like obviously there's protein in vegetables. I tend to lean vegetable heavy when I'm thinking like health. Mm. Whereas, yes, that is a part of health, but I need to like, I don't know. I We'll get to it later, but like, I, honestly, I'll just say it now. My next in after that is strength training. Like mm. I'm really just trying to get stronger and like not for aesthetics but purely because I mean where it started was my my right rhomboid google it I'm not gonna explain what a rhomboid (laughs) is uh it's it's rhombus it's it's, (laughs) my rhombus it's really weak and it's overstretched I always thought since it was since it's always in pain I need to like relax right and I need to stretch it and I need to leave it alone but I've been working with this new car chiropractor and he's like no it's quite the opposite like the reason your shoulders literally caving forward on the right side is because it's so weak Mm. you don't have supporting muscles to like yeet it back into place so long story short uh, I want to eat way more protein so with this strength training that I'm going to be consistently doing I can actually retain the muscle because that that's half of building strength it's like what are you eating after to replenish your muscles and I I don't want to just be eating vegetables like I in like light salmon and that like I want to like like bulk up like bulk up yeah Yeah. but more protein heavy my next in is calling my mom every day I just yeah I just don't call her enough and I could always tell when we're on the phone and she's like hey haven't talked to you in a couple days and you know what I think about it every day mom if you're listening I think about calling you every day (laughs) it's just (laughs) half the time I'm like Oh, I'll call her in 20 minutes when I'm done with this. And then I just forget. And then it pushes yeah. off. And then it's like 9 p.m. and I'm in bed and I'm just like, well, now it's too late. I'll call her tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So call my mom every day. Make the time for it, I guess. Exactly. I should do that. Maybe I'll add that one to my list. <laughs> hey, mom. Uh, next on mine is cooking at home, not ordering out. Mm, that's and a good actually one. making meals at home. I put this on my list because last night I was about to order a spicy facility from Ruby's. And I'm literally like reading the ingredients of the dish, right? It just says like vodka sauce, facility, basil. And I was like, what? And I closed the app and I came out here. I was like, Alex, I'm going to the grocery store. Do you need anything? And I went and bought it, all the ingredients I needed for the fraction of the price of the one serving. But now I have multiple servings to make it again. Mm -hmm. And it was 10 times better. I knew what was going into it. And I got in the kitchen. Yep. Which I love. That's great. I'm really good during the week. Especially yeah. when I do like big grocery trips. Right. It's just the, the weekend hits and I'm like, go out. Uh, honestly, <laughs> the fine print below mine does say like not necessarily weekends. Okay. Uh, like weekends, weekends are. It's fun. Like they don't we're count. like hungover and shit. Yeah. No, I'm not going to get up and fucking make facility. Right. But we, yeah, weekdays. Weekdays. When last night was a 
weeknight, obviously, and I'm sitting there and yeah, I'm tired and I can make all the excuses as to why I don't want to do it, but there's no reason not to just like make to yourself dinner. It's so silly. There's literally no reason. It's totally just like our generation. It's our like modern modern world right now that we have access to these fucking it's the convenience. delivery apps, dude. It's I, I wish I never got it. Yeah, it's the delivery and they're just living in New York in general. Right. My brother lives in North Carolina, it kind of in the middle of nowhere. And he was here for Christmas and he was like, I want to take advantage of all these different eateries and getting shit delivered. Like, mm-hmm. I don't do that. So I see. And it's a treat for him. It's a and treat like, for him. That's what weekends are. Right. Or what they can they be. They should be. What they should be. Yeah. We have how many, like three markets within a block yeah. you guys to be able to go get maybe not like a full grocery shopping thing necessarily but you can go at least get the ingredients for that thing you're craving you're craving you would order anyway right it's just the convenience it's just because we don't want to get our asses off the couch and work and get off your ass and work <laughs> we could literally have the meal to our doorstep any meal we want living in the city Jesus. and it's a fucking privilege but when you get used to it it turns into your everyday i feel like shit yeah and then I press, we press order and then the time when you're just waiting for it, waiting for it. And then when you like, when you look back at how much money you've spent oh, on it, mm-mm. that's scary. That's scary. And then do you notice yourself when you grocery shop, you're like, it was so expensive. And yes. then you're like, um, actually, no, what I just spent for two weeks of food was like two and a half meals on Postmates. Yes literally i give myself a hard time because i spent like 150 at trader joe's but then you would have spent that's that like one night out yeah that too and like hey I hate it it's literally food right you like have to eat you <laughs> have to eat you're in it's not you're not spending money no. on groceries you're, you're investing you're investing you're just turning what was money into a resource to get your body going cooking at home it's super in this year guys super in Okay, my fourth in is shopping more boutique slash Etsy. Love that. I guess one, I'll say one of my outs, I'll sneak one of my outs in here. I'm just a big, and I don't like this about myself. I'm a, for, I'll get a new outfit for any occasion. If me and my boyfriend plan a dinner date, I'm like, ooh, I need a new sweater. Yeah. And I'm such an, like an ASOS urban outfitter shopper. type thing. The overnight shit and the accessibility. I mean, we live blocks away from an urban outfitters and it's just right there but i don't need something new for everything i want to um find more valuable pieces that are going to last me longer yep instead of shit that's just going to be out of trend bad quality it's gonna you know i yep. i put investment pieces yeah investment so I'm, pieces. I'm gonna that's one of my ends on my list too investment pieces it's, it's one of my outs over consumption yep I, I'm right there with you. I think a lot of people are right now. I think it's definitely a sign of the times too. Yeah. I, I mean, online shopping shit's fucking expensive and it's like, for what? Like, why go through all that? Like, Ooh, I'm going to buy something for this next thing and then never wear it again. Right. Or like, you know, wear it a few more times before it just falls apart. Cause you bought it off urban or like something that's just going to like fall apart. So I feel you on that. And I mean, I'm guilty of it too, but that's why I want to stop it. I'm, yeah. I'm right there with you. Online shopping just got so much easier during the pandemic too. too. Like it, it goes with the Postmate thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Instead of like, oh, I can't necessarily go to the store right now. Well, I have a closet full of clothes. Right. And like you have my closet too. Like I have your closet too. Like let's right. do that. We already too. have so much shit. There's no like we have something for every fucking occasion. There's no need we need no reason we need to be buying more. A big thing for me too is especially with social media, when you see like all these cool and on TikTok, all these cool outfit of the days and shit, and you're right. like, Oh, I don't have that exact jacket. I need a I need to fill that space in my closet. But you didn't think you needed that thirty good, seconds ago before you saw that video or before you saw that outfit of the day photo. That's where I like your rule that you used to do. Yeah. I still do that. It's just I feel like now I need the items more so. Yeah. Alex has always done like a put it in your cart. And if you think about it for the next few days, like it does keep popping in your head that you really do want that item. Then there's more of a reason to press checkout, but don't just like add checkout, close tab, buy, come to your door three days later, like sit on it. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of shit and a lot of carts online right now. You should see my ASOS hearts, my favorites. Oh, yes. And I just... Sometimes that's enough though. Yeah. I press it and I'm like, Hurting. and then I, I, 
I put it in there and I'm like, okay, cool. After I'm done like scrolling on, you know, whatever you weed category, through it. I, I say that I'm like, I'm going to go look and I'm going to remember and I'm totally going to get that. And half the time I, I get exhausted by the fact of even going Being to look back at my favorites Yep. and I don't even need it. And I haven't even thought about it. No. So maybe try that. Add things to like favorites or even add things to like a Pinterest board or like make a little like mood board of maybe a type of like vibe you want to go towards for your closet before you press checkout. So you can just sit on that. Will you ever even actually incorporate it into your closet? Like that's the question I ask a Probably lot of the time. Not. There's exactly. so much shit that I've purchased because I thought the this individual item was cute. Exactly. But does it go with anything that I have? No. But then you're like, oh, okay, it doesn't. But then I'll buy the the right. jeans that will go with it. And the shoe. Okay, now you have one outfit that only goes with each other. And now what? And then you don't want to wear it again. Cy- the cycle continues because, right, you don't want to wear it again. So you need something new. Yes. Oh, it's like I already took a picture in that or it's so stupid. Whack. Over but then consumption's I up, out. I end up wearing the same shit every day. Oh, same. <laughs> I literally it's insane uh, or I like fixate on things like this vest I mm, me too Teddy Fresh sent this to me recently I love Teddy Fresh so much I've worn it almost every day it's so cute it's warm it's a way to be cozy but like not look bummy colorful too and I'm gonna like fixate on it and then it's gonna and then I'm never gonna wear it again not that's dramatic but like I won't wear it as much now yeah you rotate your your like um key pieces exactly yeah but I want to I, I want to not do that I want to like Wait, okay, let's bring back something I haven't worn in a minute. Like rotate. Rotate your wardrobe. You have like we have enough of it when I need to be wearing the same fucking outfit. And I like we have cool shit. We have such cool clothes. But I'm out here like baby tee and jeans and my Uggs every day. Well, it's out, so it's out. Moving on. Along the fashion side of things for an in, I put pointed toe shoes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's like an in thing right now, more for like the general. Okay. My next in is taking pictures of any and everything. I am so I was going to say, bad. I, fucking, I do that so bad. I'm, I'm on the opposite of that. What do you mean? I'm like, I don't need to be taking a picture of a fucking leaf oh, on the ground. See, like, I just don't take pictures in general. So yeah. I need to like take take it all. Yeah. Do I it. recently purchased a um, digital camera. And I've been bringing it everywhere. And like, I take pictures of, of most things that I quote find of like days that I find of value, which I fucking hate because every day is valuable on outings where I'm just like going to lunch or going to grab a coffee. I want to start taking more photos. Yeah. I'm just suck at photos in general. Like I think back on what does that even mean though? I, I mean, when we're out and when like memories that I think back on of like even parties or trips and shit like i don't take photos if you go through my camera roll, I thought you like, meant like you suck at like the photo my bad what do you mean i understood it wrong oh okay i thought okay. you were like i suck like i suck at taking them like they're bad oh pictures. no like i i got an eye for it yeah. i just i i like, don't, don't take think enough about it. i don't take enough photos i kind of like that though but i understand yeah i just uh it's nice in the moment i do agree like i'm i'm not one who to be on my phone on trips yeah. or even like nights out and shit, my phone's tucked, but I off I also think back to like, oh, I wish I had a visual memory of that. Yeah. And like Leanna takes pictures of oh. fucking everything. She's so good at and it. And I love it. I love it. Everyone needs a Leanna in their life. Yes. She'll take a picture of anything and everything. You can literally hit, hit her up and be like, what did we do on this day? And she'll yes. know because she has a photo stamp of it. She has a log of almost every single day of her life yep. with a photo. I'm in the middle of that one. I take good ones, but then sometimes I'm like, I don't like, and I'll take like a million of it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to like post that later or something. And then you should just see my camera roll. There's so much shit in here that will never see the light of of day. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. I'm like scrolling. I was filling out a profile for something. Oh, that uh, laps. Yeah. That new like photo sharing app or whatever. And I needed a um, profile photo and I was just scrolling and I was like, I don't have anything. Along that point, I don't have a lot of pictures of myself. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I take pictures of things and like I have like a lot of like funny pictures of you and like nights out like that. I don't have a lot of pictures of myself. And I noticed that when I was finding a profile picture for laps. Right. I'm kind of in a weird 
point right now where like I needed something with the red hair. Oh, I couldn't go yes. back to like that key one picture we all like of ourselves because that one was blonde. It was blonde. I'm like, right. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but you get what I'm saying. And I had like two that I've taken since. Right. Whenever I got my hair done, what was that? End of September. Like, yeah, I don't take a lot of pictures of myself. Yeah. I don't, but I don't like it. I, I like I it. could do like a mirror thing. Yeah. But then if you look at my fucking Instagram, it's only All mirror photos. Right. We need to start taking pictures of each other. Yes. We but then I'm like, I feel like, can you take a picture of me? But like, we just have to. Yeah. We have to do it. Yeah. Okay. Next in is doing things alone. I feel like I could have mm. said this after your like, your day, day one. outings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm good. I'm really good at this, but I felt the need to put it into the episode because. Hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I see the comment a lot, even on like vlogs where, I mean, all of my vlogs, I'm alone, right. out, like usually out in the city, like running my errands or whatever. And people are like, how are you just out here like doing that alone? Mm. And I just encourage you to try. It's, it's not really a how to that I can give you, but like. You get used to it the more you do it. Yeah. And it's the best thing ever. So it's in this year too, if that makes you easier. It's in. It's in. Okay, my last in of 2024 is hosting more dinner parties. Love that. I'm here for that. We had a successful dinner party for Thanksgiving. Loved it. It was so fun. My creative juices were flowing in a way that I didn't even like didn't even think I could tap into yeah. at one point. So, I really want to get into dinner parties. Let's do it. Hosting It'll be fun to do during the warmer seasons. Oh, yeah. Like we can like have the door open. Have the and, like, d- yes. It'll absolutely. be like summer uh, menu items. Like it yes. won't be like just cozy food. Fruit salads. Only fruit. We're going to have fruit salad oh, dinner party. I love a citrus salad. Yeah, honestly. though. Oh, yeah. so good. Let's do it. I have two more ends. I'm just going to throw them out there. Oil cleansing mm. your face. Very good for your skin. Even if you're somebody who has oily skin, majority of the time, it's because your skin's actually lacking moisture. So your face is over producing the oil to make up for the lack of moisture. So try oil cleansing. Mm. Uh, I recommend the Kiehl's one. And last one, of course, therapy. That should have been at the top of the list, to be honest. Therapy's always in. Always in. Okay, the outs. I already said overconsumption, but now I'm going to say oversharing. Mm. This is a one. Interesting. This is for me. This wasn't necessarily for the masses because I think there's a lot of people that probably don't relate to this and maybe want to share more. And I encourage you to, I, I really, it's, it's weird because I really like it. Like I do like to share everything. In what context? Like on social media or like when you're sitting out at a bar with a stranger, like just, uh, cause I'm one of those. I'm like, I'll spill. (laughs) Right. Um, Not really in social media. I didn't really, I guess I didn't think of it that way, but just in conversation, like honestly, even with like you or I don't know, like say we're having a dinner party. I I can't really think of it too situationally. It's more so like the filtering process in my head. Mm. And it's not that I'm wanting to hold things back because I don't think I could if I tried. There's times that like, maybe it's not time to share that. Like Mm. I want to sit on things in my head longer before I just share them. Okay. Whether that's an emotion, something like I'm struggling with or an idea. It could be some, it doesn't have to be like a. Right. It doesn't be serious. Yeah. Right. But like, I guess with that, like just like not filling the silence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask you this and whatever we'll ask you now on the podcast. I have been trying to not fill the silence. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed. You, and you, I won't be offended if you haven't noticed, but I've noticed, and this is like totally fine, just observing now that I don't feel the silence, I feel like we haven't talked as much during the day. Oh yeah. But like, you know me, I can go days without talking. For sure. For <laughs> sure. But like, yeah. that's why I'm wondering if you notice because I guess so. Like we, it has been, it's hard to tell because like we've had Vince here, like, right. That's we true. haven't had just like a normal week, but like, even if I like saw a TikTok or something like that. Like I don't bring it up anymore. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Why? I'm just trying, I'm, again, I'm just, just, trying, trying, something I'm just new. trying something new. <laughs> I don't even know if that's like what I mean by it, but yeah. I'm just trying to like shut up a little more. Oh, I don't think you should. I never thought you needed to. I think that's always been Me like a. Either, but I think. Do you think it'll switch some up in you or something? Maybe. I just feel like. What's up? <laughs> I just think it's like no need. Okay. I don't need to be saying every fucking stream of consciousness. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
I get you. I've always like thought that about myself because I've always felt like I, I, I'm like on the opposite side of that. Right. I like always felt like I don't need to take up space. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I'm like, I've never, I've always, I've just gotten comfortable with not speaking. Right. Genuinely comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, the silence is my, you prefer it. Yeah. The silence is like my safe space. Then, Hey, like good. Right. It would be different if you were like, Oh, I I want to, but like, I'm too nervous type thing. Yeah. That's, but I don't want you to put yourself there if it's like uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, like we'll see how long this one lasts. Like I I can't like, it it is my like personality. Do you, what do you think this also might have something to do with you not smoking? I don't know. Because you are more talkative when you smoke. Yeah, but I only smoke at night. So yes, for like our nighttime, like when we're sitting watching yeah. the show. Because that's when I know, like that's when I like see your like, you drop the, and you're like, you just say things. Of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing when I'm high. I'm very chatty. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not where, where this is coming from. But like, yes, okay. that is a thing. I, where I think this started is... I, and I kind of talked about this with you after what happened, like after the breakup, that whole thing. Yeah. And then the shit going on with my family. Yeah. I just feel like there was like that two month period, like September and October where like every fucking conversation was about the like turmoil that I have been experiencing. I get that. And like, I just like don't want to talk about me all the time. I get that. So I think that's where this started was like, okay, yes, those things are going on and they're valid and I'm going to have my feelings. Like I'm not trying to shut myself down. Right. You're just trying to like get a handle on the narrative a little more. Yeah. And like, there's more, like there's more to life. Right. There's more things going on. Yeah. Like why not talk about those things? Cause honestly, they're a lot fucking better to talk about than the really two big things I'm dealing with in my personal life right now. Like, right. You know? Yeah. And like, that's where, we started talking about you and your boyfriend. We need to give him a name. I know. Super bird punk. Like you might like we feel like thirteen year Yeah, I hate it. Like that's where it it freed like, up some space. Exactly. Like let's talk about like how you're feeling in your relationship or like what right. what something fun you did this week or like <laughs> what's like a funny TikTok you saw like. And I, I, I put it on you because we just spend time together. Like right. by default, it points to you. Right. But like, I mean this with everybody. Like even when I went to, I went to lunch with Kylie, my friend Kylie, was it like two weeks ago. I don't know. During that, like she would ask about me and I'd answer and I'd be like, no, like. Right. Like, I get you. asking about me. And I think people ask about me. Obviously it's a conversation. You ask about people and they ask about you back. But like, I don't want people to think I just exist around the two things that are going or like in exactly. around in your life because like that's what she would ask about and i'm like yes like that's happening but, other but like shit's happening i also like done my red like or right. you know something like that it's just i get you it's I, maybe it's not so much oversharing but it's like the quality of i'm of what i'm sharing i get it i get it and i think especially with like with what you a big breakthrough breakthrough for you in therapy was you not being like attached to your trauma right and the fact that like you've kind of you're in this place right now where these two big things were so life-altering that they are what they're they're the big things that are circling you right now Yep. and I, I get where you want to like get a handle on not making those two things 100% who you are yeah I get it and I and I talked about this with my therapist I'm like am I doing this as a form of escapism and she's like no I don't think so because I was scared that maybe this is me just trying to like run away from it right but I don't I now that I talked about it with her like it's not that because you've accepted it I've accepted it I've I'm still I would never I my head didn't even go there yeah I think it maybe it was just me trying to validate myself then yeah it's not it's not to avoid like when things need to be talked about they will and like if I am feeling something I will bring it up yes I also like want to I don't know I just want to talk about other things I get it I don't fucking know I get it but that's top of the list for the out big that's a big out <sighs> you're telling me oh it's 5 55 drink <laughs> five o'clock shimmy <laughs> I thought you were about to say five o'clock shadow <laughs> <laughs> that too <laughs> <laughs> that's out five o'clock showers are out i need to get one of those little razor things my mustache one. been coming in i got one 
about a three pack. Mine's big. Mine's like that. Okay. Thank My God. number like one that. out is the need to say yes. The need to say yes. I elaborate. When it comes to like making plans in general, I feel like I, especially this past couple, these past couple of years living in New York, I've told myself to like be a yes man yeah, and go out and do shit. But I think it turned into like me accommodating more so than actually just doing shit that I want to do. Mm-hmm. So I just don't need to say yes to everything. I, a powerful. I, I, I don't. I don't need to say yes to everything. And I'm not talking like career wise or like opportunities or mm-hmm. it's just more so like. Hey, do you want to go to this restaurant on Tuesday? No, I don't. Like what you're doing with your time. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. You don't need a reason to say no. God, no. No is a complete sentence. Like don't let people like hound you with the but why. Just be like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. You know? Where Where is this come up in your life plan like plans yeah i'm just i i feel like i'm accommodating with plans in general is there have i done this i don't think so that's why i asked i think it has like more to do with like social settings and like choosing bars and shit but it's like i don't think it falls on a specific person i don't know the the bars choosing sounds like minuscule it's just like no. not just going with the flow just because Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at. That's interesting. I feel like that's a really common line to walk in your 20s. I feel yeah. like early 20s, you're like. Because you want to. That's why I said like yes. in my in my head, I want to be this yes man and like go with the flow. And then late 20s, once you're nearing your 30s, you're like, I don't want to do shit that I don't want to do. Yeah. Straight up. And it's more so it's like. It's not other people, like to you asking if it was you, it's not other people making the decisions for me. It's more so like two or three weeks ago, I think we all went out and I had this thought where I was like, okay, I want to go home early. (laughs) But then I was like, no, Alex, stay out. Like everyone's having fun. You're having fun. But then I was like, but I just want to go home and be in bed. But I stayed out because you know what I mean? It's very situational. Yeah, it's very situational. And ended up staying out because like everyone like I said everyone was having fun I was having fun but I wish I woke up the next morning and I was like I wish I would have just gone home when I wanted to go home yep you know what I mean I completely get it it's it's situational and I feel like almost a part two of this maybe this will resonate is just honoring what you want in the moment yes so it's it, it, whether that means and staying I, out exactly like maybe you will actually want to stay at one exactly it, or not it's just like and like it's allowed to change exactly. and that's why i like pin I, like i couldn't find an example but i pinpointed to that night because that specific night i just wanted to go home early didn't have a reason right I just wanted i just don't want to be out anymore yep but then like i ended up staying out because i wasn't just gonna go home alone but like you could go home alone you could also do that yep you yep. could also just separate from the group yeah like you won't Bye, have guys. fomo i want to go and be i want to go be in bed exactly exactly i like that it's yeah. just honoring what what you want without having to have a reason or need to validate it so other people can wrap their head around it. It's not for them to wrap their head around. Right. Uh, my next out is scented candles. Mm. They're super bad for us. God, I hate this out. I know. I know you do. And I actually thought I, I like when I wrote it down, I was like, I hope she doesn't take this personal. <laughs> I got rid of all of mine. Well, I didn't get rid of them. I burnt them. And okay. Then now I said goodbye forever. Okay. We need to find some alternatives totally fine okay. like even like the smokeless ones that you bought here these like uh these oh, white yeah. ones you have smoke and scentless ones that's fine that's totally fine I'm, i love candles don't get me wrong but like finding more the more natural ones and like the beeswax and all that right no more volcano candles <sighs> hey this is mine you, you your <laughs> side of the room you do whatever the fuck you want i'll just open a window i don't know this is also for the masses too like yeah i've just been hearing and seeing so much horror stories bad shit yeah. about it and they're bad for our pets too. Yeah. And it's winter right now. So like 99% of the time Windows we don't closed. have ventilation. Well, we do. That sounded scary, but like, right. you know, no, fresh I get air. You. Let me burn through these and then let's sit Please. down one day and like find good alternatives. And we'll just like, we'll buy from hella different brands, yeah. test them out, yeah. see what we like. And then we'll find our candle. Love that. Love that. We'll okay. keep you guys updated with the scented candle thing, but I'm in, I get it. Like, I, I love, love candles, volcano. but wait, I'm sure there's a fucking natural dupe yeah, out there. There has to be. If we just read the notes of what the volcano is made of, like eucalyptus and blah, blah, blah. We could even like finesse one. Right. What if we just made our own candles? Yeah. And we have all these jars. 
We do have a lot of we jars. We have so many things it's to hold so candles much in. Work. No, it's not. I got a lit crusade. Finding the finding the uh like the formulas and the ratios that sounds of different. Fun. We'll cross that bridge. We'll when we cross get there. that bridge when we get there. But they're out. <laughs> All right, my next out for 2024 is getting blackout drunk. <laughs> I'm just so over I it. I like that. I don't need to get blackout drunk every night out. When's the last time you got blackout drunk? From like- as an outsider, you've been great. Oh, uh, <laughs> that weekend in the Bay when I was doing, I started the night with oh, White Claws. Oh, yeah. And then apparently, I didn't apparently. know this. I found this out the next morning. <laughs> we ended up at a bar down the street in our hometown <laughs> And I was doing Jaeger bombs shots with like, it, it was like hometown vibes. Like it yeah. felt like the night before Thanksgiving. And I was doing Jaeger bomb shots with like people from high school and shit. And yeah. I just don't need to be doing that. No comment, but full support. I'm sure it was fun in the moment, but I really, I was, you guys, I have never had a hangover that bad in my entire life. That was the worst ever. That's Jaeger bombs, bro. Ever. Like, but I love Jaeger bombs. They're so good. They, they give me a rash. Oh my god! Remember that? Yeah, they are so they're so tasty. Yeah, they're I can easy. down them. They're easy. Oh god, but no more. No, I, I like that. I feel you. Yeah, no more blackout nights. Uh, my next out is picking your skin. Mm. I thought you'd like this Huge. one too. Yeah, I'm trying. We're all trying, but maybe now that it, it's on an out list and it's like not cool anymore right it's a battle every day yeah yeah no more picking skin not your face not your thumbs not i'll even be picking ingrown hairs on my thighs and oh, shit yeah. like stop touching <laughs> it stop touching it we gotta start yelling at each other sometimes i see you and like i know but when you i yell at, at your you, eyebrow the other night no i know Monopoly, but I, I know I, I, same thing i wanted to yell at you and i was like no then she's gonna be like because be. because we both know how it feels when someone yells and at it you. It doesn't hurt. And I like I'll be like, no, shut up. Yeah, like I get defensive. Yes. And I'm like, because I know I'm wrong. Yep. When I turn like a, a but puppy it's such with a like natural reaction tail between the legs. Yes. I know. Like, I don't call it. me out. I know what I'm doing is bad. Maybe we should just say like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> stop. Or what if we just <laughs> touch arm? Okay. touched picking arm and just yeah but sometimes i see like when i walk by i see you just like standing hella close to your mirror <laughs> and you, you could tell by the like silence yeah in the bathroom but oh, the door's yeah. open and you don't hear pee and yeah. you don't hear tiktok so i'm not shitting no you're just like two inches two from th- your big mirror yeah the hinge at the hips over the yeah. sink like <laughs> yeah no I'm, i don't do that anymore so no, yeah that's, that's crazy. out super out. super out not cool uh i have two more outs caffeine first thing in the morning oh yeah it's a good Have one. a cup of water first. Mm-hmm. Whatever your caffeine is, even if it's it is tea or whatever you feel like is like a health, healthier thing, whatever you're having in the morning, just have it be water first. It does a lot for your gut. It does a lot for your hormones. It's a good rule. And my last one is intellectual intellectualizing emotions. That's hmm. that is out for me. Do you want to expand on that one? Yeah, I especially with therapy over the past few years, like I've learned a lot of just like how the human brain works and like the, especially with EMDR, like the, the literal order in which your brain processes things on like a neurological level. It's fascinating. I love it. But with that, I apply it to myself naturally. I really struggle. And even in my sessions, like if we're doing like a reprocessing moment with a certain memory or you know whatever it sounds so stereotypical but she'll say like how does that make you feel and I'll be like oh well it makes me feel this because you know when I was younger and this would happen and she said okay that didn't answer like she gets like blunt with me and I love it Mm. she's like that's not a feeling you're right you're you're explaining why you feel that way which is great that's self-awareness you're jumping a step self-awareness this could be a whole other fucking episode is like a blessing and a curse Mm. when it comes to this intellectualizing emotions point because I feel like like when I started therapy in 2020 I was just like I'm gonna have compassion for myself but like for a lack of a better word I was a fucking mess and then I got into therapy and was like whoa what is all of this felt everything got really depressed intellectualized my way out of depression by just trying to understand why I was depressed And then the past few years have been me now actually just feeling the emotions that put me into depression in the first place. If I would have just felt them, maybe I wouldn't have gotten fucking depressed. Right. So it's, it's almost like a, I'm doing the work I should have done, whatever. Again, not judging myself here, but yeah, what that point means, means to me is just like, 
I just start with words now. Mm. Like, so back to the therapy point, she'll be like, okay, no, no, no. How does it make you feel? And I literally will sit there in silence and be like, sad, um, embarrassed, confused, like one word, it really simple. It like, bring it back to elementary school. If you're someone who struggles with this. I love that's, that. That's what I need to do though. Yeah. That's really nice. Cause good I, reminder. Yeah. I just it's, get so obsessed with like the meaning. It's easy to jump to conclusions too. And like, yeah. it's not about the meaning sometimes. It never is. It's never about the meaning. It's actually never about that. No. It's never about. You know why? Cause you can't change or do anything about it after right. you, it, you already felt it. It already happened. You feel it. You can't erase the effect right. because you the know why it happened. It. I felt the wrath of it. Yeah. Having the why does not take away that it actually happened. Not at all. I never really worry about taking it away. It's like, it's, um, it's a is control it, thing. Yeah. It's if I can intellectualize the reason something happened to me, that means I have control over it. That's what my brain says. That's right. not the fucking truth, but that's what my, that's like why I have that pattern. That's but why that's, you go there. that's why I'm trying to break it mm. because I, d I don't have control over anything. That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to control anything. It's exhausting. Only me in every situation. Yep. So no more. That's out. Big out. Super lame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next little prompt that we're doing is uh, this was actually like what we thought the full e episode was going to be. But then I just like was brainstorming, whatever. This is kind of something we even say in like lighter situations. Too. Yeah. Like, oh, like my God. If blank year old me saw this now they wouldn't she believe would, it she would freak out yep there's a few ages I have about like three different ages that kind of popped into my head I really like sat down and like channeled these answers too um of things that that younger version of me would see now and be like whoa what? you're there like no that happened. way you're doing that unreal this is a very common um thing you do in emdr too oh really she always asks like and now i've gotten to the point where like i i know when blank year old me steps forward in a reprocessing moment and it tends to be 12 year old me all the time whoa and she's like side bangs like she's wow and she's sitting there like side eyeing you like she's like sassy and just like a little brat and like whoa and yeah so i feel like i've like I, when it when i channel it like she always sits to my left whatever that means I don't know. So I, I did that in this. It was fun. Love that. This, honestly, the pr the brainstorming for this whole episode was so fun to me. Okay. I'm going to kind of just like read what I wrote. Okay. I think it'll be easier to talk through. 12 year old me would not believe that I live with you. Mm. I'm going to cry. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh my God. I gotta cry. Stop. I don't want to cry. <laughs> I said it forward. <laughs> I need another Ollie pop. Oh my God. You're already done? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh. I've chugged it for some reason. <laughs> oh my God, I'm like halfway done with this. Stop it. I'm going to oh. cry. Stop. She wouldn't believe I lived with you. Oh. Because that's like what. Oh, wow. Chill. I need to do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. But this is it's really okay. Like, laugh. That's Ugh. like what every best friend growing up wants. Oh my God. It, that's all you could ever imagine when you're 10 years old playing on the playground and yeah or like sleepovers yeah like what if we just live together like right we're doing it yeah we are so that's cool she wouldn't believe that i have a dog and not a cat oh yeah that's crazy because <laughs> i grew up a big cat person and i was never against dogs but like it's just crazy i don't have a cat um she wouldn't believe i'm <laughs> get it together wouldn't believe that i'm an aunt of two uh, a niece and a nephew and really close with my sister now because when I was I didn't get close with my sister until I was like 18. She wouldn't believe that ooh, mm. ah. <sighs> she wouldn't believe that um, my mom is starting to take her health seriously to say the least. She wouldn't believe that she got her power back and is finally respected by her parents. Fuck my you wanna hold my hand. <laughs> my hand. It's because I want my period. I know the female body is crazy. <laughs> She wouldn't believe that I spoke to my my real dad at the table during my uncle's wedding. That's like a double whammy there because my uncle got married finally. <laughs> um, and we talked about shared characteristics, dreams, and emotions that we've always had in common but never knew. And lastly, she wouldn't believe that I actually get paid to be a chatterbox now. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, my hands are so sweaty. It's okay, mine are probably too. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, you do. That's really cool. You do too. Yeah, (laughs) kind (laughs) of. I talk sometimes. Oh my god, that was really crazy. (laughs) That was good. That was probably felt really good. It did. Good. If we would, I swear, if we would recorded this yesterday, I would have been fun. (laughs) You're good. You want to take a little break? No, that felt good. Okay, good, good. I was just, I was just crying. Good. Mine feel really silly after. (laughs) I bet if I read them, I'll cry. (laughs) Oh no, I might get there. Okay. (laughs) Um, I channeled thirteen year old me. Uh, she would not believe that I work for a creative job in the fashion industry. That I never saw myself doing that. I always like totally thought and pictured I would be in a cubicle and like that sounds so like everyone hates cubicles these days and like talks so much shit about a cubicle job but like that's what I saw well not back then right like to that point and like I thought that was like where I was gonna end up I wanted I loved math I wanted to go to like a four-year regular regular in quotes college but that's just like not what happened to me and like she would never believe that I went to art school and have a creative career in the fashion industry, which is crazy. When you think of her now seeing that scenario, what is, like, is she judgy or is she happy? Like, what it, what is she? She's probably just really confused. Excellent. She's so, like, she was so set. And she, I'll get to, like, more of sure. the, the planning later. Yeah. But I've always been such a big planner down to like the year, like where I wanted my life to be and like what I saw. And if things didn't go to plan, it wasn't okay. And the fact that this is so against, like my life now is so against everything that was the what she thought her plan was. She's probably just like, what the fuck happened? What? Confused. What the frick? What the frick? <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> yeah, That's see, probably what she's they're saying. They're judgy. Yeah. Little bitches. Little bitches. She would not believe that I don't live in California. mm and she wouldn't believe that she lost, or I, I lost um, Opa and Grandma Bonnie in the same year. And that my grief taught me so much about slowing down, learning to accept, having compassion, and how it shaped my values moving forward. Mm-hmm. After, after those losses, I feel like I did a lot of growing up and I did a lot of changing. In her head... I would never have lost lost my grandparents, and right. it like I saw them living forever, which is I know sounds dumb, and but that's what that's, that's what, what a twelve and thirteen year old should be thinking. They shouldn't need to be stressing about right the death and whatnot. That's, yeah, so that's for twenty eight year old. I don't think she ever <laughs> thought it would happen, and she would be surprised and comforted to know that a lot of beauty came out of those the 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 grief itself. And the losses, so yeah, yeah. Woo! We put a pause <sighs> track over that. <laughs> okay, my next age is eighteen-year-old me. Okay, eighteen-year-old me wouldn't believe that I'm not married yet, and I'm single. She wouldn't believe I have this many tattoos or that my hair is red, not blonde, and I don't straighten my hair anymore. Oh, I know those seem really. You get it. I know yeah. maybe to you guys those seem really like what the fuck, but like. I was set on an aesthetic for a minute, (laughs) to say the least. To say the least. (laughs) She wouldn't believe that I love therapy and I'm in it by choice. Yeah, 18 was the age where that was like the first time I was told like, hey, (laughs) you should maybe. And I was like, no. Do you remember who told you? My sister. Oh, okay. And I was like, I don't like, I don't need that. I don't need, of course. She wouldn't believe that high school is barely a topic anymore. Uh but that I still talk to Miss O'Connor. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that was uh, my English teacher senior year. That woman is a very big reason why I graduated. And she's like the coolest teacher ever. Um, she wouldn't believe that I traveled alone in Europe and wouldn't believe that I got cheated on again. <laughs> again, it's crazy. <laughs> again, it's crazy. <laughs> 10 years later. Ten years I did a later. little run around again. Wow. 18 year old Kristen was something else too uh she was just doing her own thing yeah she was trying really hard not a try hard that's not what I mean she was like like genuinely she was trying yeah in all aspects of the phrase yeah yeah which is such a good thing oh yeah that's what you're supposed to be doing at 18 no judgment towards my younger self okay I channeled 22 year old me why 
Um, I'm glad you asked. 22 year old me was that sounded set up. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, cause I, in my head, the little pause was like, okay, should I go into why 22? Yeah. Um, I was in a relationship. Okay. I have, I think I've talked about it on the podcast and I've definitely talked about it with you. I have one memory of that time in my life. I think I was, t- if not 22, then I like was on the very edge of 21. Um, and I was driving down the highway and I felt I was in a relationship and I felt very fucking alone. And I just remember like bawling in my car and just thinking like, I hate everything in my life right now. And like, what is going to happen next? And I was just riddled with questions and I was confused and I was just, I was madly depressed. And I channeled her because she would just not believe that we even made it this far. Yeah, there's a lot to it, but okay, I'll just jump right into it a pivotal time it was it was 22 year old me would not believe that you feel now i'm gonna cry (laughs) 22 year old me wouldn't believe that you feel more connected to people than you ever thought possible (sighs) (laughs) uh, (laughs) why do we and you know what whenever we have these episodes we never know it's gonna turn out like this not at all (sighs) Okay. Th- this is why inner child work is so important though yeah 22 year old me would not believe that you're in love and in a healthy relationship with someone who values you and you started therapy and you survived a pandemic oh my god <laughs> that's a good one yeah she would never believe it i'm proud of her too oh thank you <laughs> wipe your face <laughs> What was my makeup everywhere? No, but you're like super wet. (laughs) (laughs) The pandemic one's crazy though. Yeah. I didn't even think to write that in there. Your makeup's fine, but it was just, you were just super wet. I was just super (laughs) wet. Yeah. It was waterworks over here. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. She'd be, she'd be proud. Our little us's would be really proud. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that we went different age, not that we went different ages, but like, we pinpointed specific times in our life where we knew that. And did like, you notice they just kind of popped in your head oh, too yeah. when you were thinking I about knew. this? I know. 13 and 22. 13 was when I, it's actually crazy. I This just clicked. 13 was when I thought I knew how every single little bit of my life would turn out. And 22 was the crashing point when I realized I can't control what's going to happen. You have no fucking idea what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, who's going to be in your life. You just have to like roll with the punches. Yep. And now I'm at a point where I've accepted both of those versions of me for what they were, but like they were both really fucking wrong. And right. like it's okay to be wrong about those aspects of your life. They were each on the other side yep. of the extreme. Yep. And now you're teetering the like. I get walk. it now. Like, yeah. You could, you take from that side and this side to like support both sides. Yep. And that's growing up. Oh, that's growth, people. The third age, this one popped up. It's not as like crazy as 12 and 18, but 25 popped up for me. 25 year old me wouldn't believe that I live in New York and wouldn't believe that I ever left LA. She wouldn't believe that my career took off after what I thought was the only reason people liked me. When those people left my life, I thought like my life was going to go to shit career wise, but it, it it didn't did at the all. <laughs> did the opposite. <laughs> um, and she wouldn't believe that I'm actually so comfortable being single. And I chose 25 because that was when I got out of my really long relationship that I thought like I like was going to be the one. It is crazy to think that that was only three years, almost four years ago. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know, the New York one specifically, like if you, if we, we talked about this before too, like if you would have even said it, 2021 a few months before we actually fucking moved i'd be like no shot it wasn't realistic until the day we got here Mm -hmm. until we booked the moving company yeah and we were in the bay for a halloween party or no that was when i sorry that was when i moved into auckland my bad my bad oh yeah yeah oh people but people from the bay were in la yes for our final weekend with like california friends yep and then the, the day they left was the day literally the moving truck pulled up. And I was like, whoa, oh, like we actually have to put things in this truck and like <laughs> everything that we own is not going to be in L.A. anymore. Yes. Yeah. And no crazy. looking back. No, no. Like, looking I'm back. like, I was actually thinking about it today. Like, I'm excited 
if this is where we end up going, like I want to live in Brooklyn. Like I'm excited for like I'm, the next chapter I'm ex- of yeah, New York, you know? Exactly. Like I'm excited for what's next. And like I did it when I, when we left LA, I kind of thought like, oh my God, is this a rash decision? Are we going to like, are we going to regret it? Are we going to come back in a year because we didn't like it? But like we didn't fall to that. No. And I'm, I'm happy we didn't. The only thing that I thought was going to bring me back was Tanner. Mm-hmm. And like now I like, I have no plan to go back not saying I'm here forever either but like and that's the beauty of it yes you don't have like I just there's I don't know exactly here yay I love that it's vibing (laughs) okay next thing were just some 2023 review questions it sounds Mm -hmm. like something you would do at like your job that's not that serious they're a little more emotional than that um we could just say the question and then we'll say each other's answers my answers are super short so we'll fly through this yeah uh, what word or phrase best describes this past year? Mine is no plans. Love that. Yep. Love I, that. This was the first year of my life where I didn't feel the need to plan everything out as far as where I wanted to see my career or like what I wanted in my personal life. And it has been the most freeing fucking thing I've ever experienced. And I'm glad to hear like the conversation we just had two seconds ago. I'm glad to hear that you're there too. Absolutely. Good. I have a feeling this maybe comes with 28 too yes yeah like I I think this is this point in our lives yeah this is and I I this is a question I ask if you're older than us too listening to this I'd be curious to hear what you think but this is a question I always ask people that are older than me like what what is that age that rough age where it kind of just clicked for you Mm. and a lot of people the the majority answers are between like 28 and 30 like that that final push in your 30s you feel or like excuse me your 20s is like a, you're hitting adulthood in the yeah. real or very real way but it didn't it isn't clicking in the sense of like I don't want to discredit the work we've done on ourselves but like it's just clicking because it's clicking it's not mm-hmm. clicking because like only because we put in the work no. I think it's also just like a brain development thing yeah. and like the time you're on the earth and whatever your higher power is maybe it's just finally like granting you that fucking knowledge totally. like it does just happen one day yes and that sounds so like fairy tale but have faith if you are younger than that younger than us like it really will just click one day and those clicking moments happen like I feel like I had one at like maybe like 23 yep and then another one at like 26 and like and they're always for different reasons but it is like oh you wake up one day and you're like oh fuck everything right the word or phrase that best describes this past year for me is truth comes out uh this isn't just for the obvious like relationship shit that you guys know but a lot of truth of like my family has come out a lot of truth of like within myself has come out it's just truth comes out whatever whatever that means in in all aspects the curtains were drawn back for you this year big time uh when did i feel the most present this year and i wrote the first two weeks with my boyfriend oh wow I like go back to those two weeks a lot in my head when it two weeks of of being official or two weeks of meeting meeting okay yeah it was like the most I felt at home in New York that was something that I was big time lacking when I when we first moved here and even when I first started therapy what I felt like I was missing in New York was a sense of home and I don't know if it has to do with him specifically or the simple fact of like me putting myself out there and growing roots in a way. A companion, man. Com- yeah, companionship out here that didn't tie me back to yep. the West Coast in any way. It like really pulled me to New York and those first two weeks with him, what I felt so at home in a way that I hadn't felt and uh, uh, since we lived in California. Right. I love that. Yeah. It, it, that was one of those click moments almost. Yep. It seems like. Yeah. My moment that I felt most present this year was Montana. Mm. The night that we were dancing oh, and I was crying and everyone was night. hyping me up. This trip turned my healing into a beautiful thing rather than a depressing thing. And I left that trip a different person. I think we talked about it in the Montana like recap episode, but yeah. it was it was weeks after the breakup it was literally like two weeks after and like shit was still coming out about Tanner and like the friend group we went with was like part of Tanner's friend group too and like there was a lot of emotion around like do I even still need to go on this trip like does is this bad because he was supposed to come and it was it was what I thought was going to be like 
fuck, man. Like, I thought this trip was going to be something totally different. And now I'm going into it with, you know, being bummed already. And I'm not even there. Right. And then literally night one, I'm like. There's a reason. I just all of us. It was this big circle table that Ow. had a hole in the middle. It was like a big. It was like an old like like those a wheel. wooden wheels for like big like uh, ropes or something. Yep. But it, it was turned on its side and now created as a table at this Airbnb. And I was standing in the middle of it, and everyone was standing like up around it, just like hyping ah, you up, like screaming <laughs> around me. Like it was in some wicked way. It was like. It was a very much like ritual vibes. Oh, yeah. Like it was, I had everyone's loving energy around me and like we were all fucking plastered drunk. It was, I, you like, know what it was? It was just a very high vibration that night. Yes. And I think it stuck with you. Like it, it struck you and it stuck with you. It like it edited yes. the vibration within me, yes. especially around my healing around the breakup. Like, wow. Yeah. And that I was like, so present in that moment and like nobody was on their phones at all that whole fucking night like we don't like yeah that and when I was thinking about this answer that like that came to mind and love that right away like I knew that was my most present moment okay what is your movie and song of the year my movie although it did not come out in 2023 is Barbarian oh I watched it in 2023 and I watched it again in 2023 and I watched it again in 2023 and I just think it's gonna be it's good it's gonna be a classic that i know i'll go back to yeah like i'll make make my kids watch that one absolutely if you guys have not seen it go watch go watch barbarian um and my song is cherry picking by oh my god oh kamari cherry picking by kamari and it's literally about taking the good with the bad and not everything is going to be cherry picking good and it's it's just a really good meaning behind the song and it's a good song on top of it find find yourself listening to it a lot yep my movie of the year is the Barbie movie. I I obviously know have majority of you probably seen it, but it's not only like a feel good, but like I just loved the message behind it. I think it's finally a movie that represents womanhood in a way that's digestible regardless of your gender. Yes. And I think it finally hopefully clicked in a lot of people's brains like you know, what's in our heads 99% of the time in a societal level. And it was also just like so funny and it was unexpected, unexpected too. Like we yeah. went into it thinking it was just going to be like cute Barbie movie, but yeah. then it had the message that it had. It's just so good. It is really good. We should watch it again. It's it, out on. Yeah, it's out. Yeah. Uh, do you want to watch it tonight? Yeah. Like, we'll throw it on. <laughs> oh my God. You're going to cry. Ball. <laughs> I'm going to ball. Um, my song of the year is Higher by Creed. Mm. this song you can you take me (laughs) like it's funny and all but i'm telling you like this why am i gonna cry (laughs) this song (laughs) no i'm fine it's just something in my eye obviously the song's been around forever but like i feel like i i it was one of the songs that i rediscovered this year oh yeah and it was it was on my spotify wrapped like as like one of my most listened to songs this year like i'd listen to it all the time and it's one of the songs that i listened to so much growing up but now i finally understand the lyrics oh i love when you come across those and i just he's talking i don't know he like refers to his dreams and like bringing society to the beauty that his dreams are and all we need to do to get there is love Mm. and like I don't know like that's that's like what we need to do go creed you know right <laughs> that i should love get my a creed president. tattoo <laughs> say, I'm on, say I'm on my throat should we go to your tattoos this weekend that's crazy i literally almost we'll get it to in a sec for our 2024 goals we only wrote three so i felt kind of crazy putting that in top three but number four i want more tattoos this year yeah let's go my shoulder one should get green yeah <laughs> <laughs> you should. I don't think I should. <laughs> no, I'll get that in like a tramp stamp or something. Please. A Creed tramp stamp. Hot. That's hot. Hot. Like lower, like back of the thigh, like underneath the fold of my ass. Yeah. Creed. Hot. I don't know. Just you better don't know. watch Nobody out. steal that. Someone's going to steal it. What's Creed doing Nobody these wants to steal it. No. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay. What lesson did the seer teach me? I put, it's okay to not have a plan. Do what you want in the moment no overthinking this has been one for me where um i feel like i've had a handle on my overthinking this year my anxiety has been at a a fucking all-time low 
I feel like I'm not overthinking every little thing. And I think I think it's like a it's a cycle for me. The overthinking leads to the feeling of like control and needing to plan to stop the overthinking. Exactly. So it's just like a never ending cycle. And now that I've kind of had a handle on my overthinking, I feel like I've released the need to control all of like every aspect of my life and the planning and all of this. So it's been like a win win for me. And I I want to do that again in 2024 for sure. The beauty of that is once you realize that new key, you don't really lose it. Right. And if you, and if you do, no ju- self-judgment, but you know the tool to bring to yourself get it back. back. For sure. Whereas up until this point, like if, if you struggle with overthinking or anxiety, like it's so human to lean to control to stop those patterns. Mm. But I'm telling you, like the answer to it is actually the opposite. If you just lean in, like... It's almost like when when I was learning how to ride a motorcycle, they were teaching like when you turn the corner, you're you supposed lean to into lean it. into turning the corner to be safer on the bike, which even still, now that I know how to ride, I'm like, that still doesn't make sense because you, you think go the opposite way. So you like balance your bike, right? But it, it's very dangerous to do that. That's how I look at emotion now. Like it, it literally clicked when I learned that. And if you lean into it, not only does that help process the overthinking or the anxiety, but you get through it quicker Mm. than if you're just trying to control it. Like it just takes longer to try and control things and create other bad habits. Because the reason why is because you can never actually control it. So you're going to drive yourself crazy with the need to control all of your emotions and overanalyze everything and overthink everything and trying to have control over every aspect of your life. But it's, you're not going to get there. It's never going to happen. It's not how you do it Mm -mm. but don't judge yourself your brain wanting to do that is just survival mode and it's but you don't need to be in survival mode anymore Mm -mm. you are in the driver's seat the lesson that this year taught me i kind of already touched on it but i'll still read it I, i wrote two really big things happened and hurt me this year that had absolutely nothing to do with me. Mm. This was the first time in my life. I couldn't attach myself to the reason something happened. It forced me to realize it's completely out of my control. I'm not the reason it happened and I'm not the reason it didn't happen. I can't control what happens period. I can only control how I react and protect myself going forward. Love that. Now I could choose who I want to trust with the tools that I've gained. It's very powerful. But Things that like happen to me aren't because of me. Mm -mm. Who would have thought? (laughs) What was the most unexpected thing that happened this year? And mine was falling in love. Ah, didn't see that one coming. (laughs) (laughs) Who would have thought? (laughs) Who would have thought? Mine is my family's dynamic shift. Mm. I I can't elaborate too much, but it's definitely like fucking crazy. (laughs) It is. Even as like a. I'll call myself an yeah, I mean, outsider family, in this, though. but like I'm, I'm an outsider in this specific situation sure. that you're talking about. And I think it's fucking crazy. I never thought it would happen. Nope. Okay. Goals for 2024. We wrote three each. So we don't drown you out with too much because we've already, this episode's already really fucking long. Um, and I personally, I like smaller goals yeah. or not smaller goals, but smaller lists because I think bigger handle on them. Yeah. Like I think we've said this in like, our past New Year's episodes too. Like if you overwhelm yourself with all these insane things that you're just going to start cold Turkey, like be realistic with yourself. Start yep. if, if that even means you're just starting with one, you guys like know yourself and like only bite off what you can chew. And cause then you're, you don't set yourself up for failure, you know? Totally. So I feel like three was good. Yeah. I, I wrote three. I have a bonus, but yeah. actually I already said it. I'll say it again, but it's just a bonus. Yeah. My first one is focus on my independent career. And for all of these goals, I did more broad. These past couple of years, all of my um, like goals and resolutions were super specific. And I did very broad ones. My number one was focus on my independent career. I'm on track to be a senior designer at my work. And I just really want to fucking focus on that and get there and get that title. And it's, it's a really big opportunity for me and I, I really want it. 
You got it. Yeah. I'm it's not, already there. I'm not tripping. It's already there. I'm really not. That's not even on some like just trying to be pot. Like I'm actually <laughs> not tripping. Like you're going to get it. Thanks. That's a, it's a big goal for me. It's you a, it. it's a big career goal in general, but this year specifically. Number two, I say this every year, travel new places. Love that. I just want to go. There's no reason not to for me. Mm-hmm. Like I could work remote. Yep. I have the means to like. You I got have a travel. Card. I have a tra- travel credit card. I have miles that I could fucking use. Yes. Like, I just need to take advantage. Yep. Um, number three, live day by day. Be present. Don't ever think tomorrow or plans for the next weekend or where you're going to be in two months. Live day by day. And then my bonus, which I already kind of said, was take more photos. I love that. Your day by day one. That's one of mine too. Oh really? I titled it. Don't jump to conclusions. Mm. Um, and what I mean by that is like, if I have a bad Monday, it doesn't mean I'm having a bad Tuesday. Good. Love that. If I, if I have a bad Monday morning, it doesn't mean I have a bad Monday afternoon. Yes. And like so much easier said than done, but I feel like, and this has always been something I've tried to do mentally, but I think I'm finally starting to get a hold of it. It's a lot of like just stopping and being like, and just like taking a breath. Mm. Sometimes it really is as simple as like. Let me just stretch for 10 minutes and like recalibrate my bad morning. I'll go back to that example. My bad morning so that I can, you know, recenter and attack the rest of the day and it could be a good day now. Or this is something I've really had to start doing with, like I've been sleeping really bad, but life goes on. Like just because I slept bad, like, you know, I can have a little slow morning because I literally didn't sleep. Right. Well, like pull it together, like get my caffeine, still go move my body go work out. Don't jump to a conclusion that now it's just like bad week, like relax with that. Number two is consistent strength training. I've always been a relatively active person, a relatively healthy person. But like I said earlier, I'm really just like wanting to get stronger, like uh, not for aesthetics though. Like I, this isn't like a weight loss thing or like uh, for like some summer body. for your health. Yeah. Like I just feel weak. Like, Mm -hmm. like I'm taking different classes at orange theory that are more like, I take like the lift classes now and like, like I'm focusing more on like my form and then my recovery when I come home, the protein thing, like what I'm going to eat to actually replenish my muscles. And yeah, I just want to be more consistent with that. I've, I've been going the past, like, I think I'm like two weeks right now. So I started this one a little early, but why not? Yeah it's never too late or early to start something like that. And I feel like we should say that for this whole episode, you guys, like just because it's January 1st, like you could also start this whenever like yep. resolutions can start any fucking day. Um, my third and final, I put the, I was like nervous to put this on here, but that's why I put it on here. Cause mm. I think it's something that I just like, I know I want to do, but like, I don't, I don't know. Um, starting school. Mm. I have yeah. to do it. Do I it. have to do it. Guys, the back of my knees are sweating so bad. I have to do it. I'm nervous too because of all the time it's going to take and it is going to be the next three years of my life. But I'm also like, it's all, time's only ticking. Yeah. Like, it's on your mind right now and there's no yeah. reason not to right now. Yeah. So what's like, what's stopping you? The time. The time. The, the time commitment. Okay. Because I, I do like living day to day and like being able to take like a spontaneous trip. And like, I I'm very grateful that I am able to do that. Yeah. And this is something that is going to lock me down into focus mode. Yep. But I'm also really itching for, I think it'll feed you. Exactly. I'm itching for like, (laughs) sounds kind of silly, but like getting smarter. Yeah. You know, learning something. I want to learn something. The brain wants to learn all the time. Yes. Like I'm itching to dive into untouched ter- territory mm-hmm. and like really like not only leaning into acupuncture because like it's something I'm passionate about but also just like seeing what the fuck I'm capable of yeah it's in you I, I, I got that dog in me you're <laughs> you're passionate about it like yeah put yourself there it's just the time but just I don't do know it I'm I'm saying it and the beauty of the school that I'm looking at is like I can start and you do pay as you go so like it's if not you, like, like if I hate it, I'm right. it's not like I just lost all this money necessarily. Like whatever. You're paying for your knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah, it is. And it's an investment in myself. Time is money. Live, laugh, live. Money is time. The higher the heaven, the the higher the hair, the closer to heaven. Bigger the hoop, bigger the hoe. 
And that, that's actually number four. Yeah. <laughs> Wear bigger hoops and be a hoe. I was actually going to put in one of my ends, big, clunky, like tacky earrings. Uh, yeah. That's super no, in. I, that's, I actually just saw that one. Yeah. Super in. I, I'm being serious too. No, I, big earring I, person. Yeah. Chunky earrings. Are, that's always in. Like chunky jewelry. I love chunky jewelry. Yeah. Maybe my bonus one will be have sex. Yeah. <gasps> Alex is stoked. Yeah. For real though, like I need to have, ugh, I don't want to say like meaningless sex because that's sex not my that vibe. Sex that doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be like with the person I'm the about one. to date or yeah, like the one, like I can also just have like safe, fun, consensual sex. Yep. Love that one. That should be number one. No, yeah. No, I think I have, you know, I think I have you a good priority right here. <laughs> and then tattoos. So that's like four and five. Yeah. Love that. I'll, I'll get on that train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. Wait, we have one more thing. Did you not? Oh, do final I thing? did. Our final prompt is write a message to our future, our future selves to read one year from today. I'll go first. What are you saying to future um, you? A lot of mine are questions. Which classic Alex. Um, hey Alex. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey yeah. just to me. <laughs> to whom this may concern. You started it with hey Alex. Yeah. I'm talking to Alex. <laughs> Get a lot of those ready. I said, Hey Alex, how is twenty twenty four? We're having a conversation. No, you're not. She's just <laughs> reading it. Whatever. Okay, exactly. I want her to feel like this is a safe place where she could be honest. I, I think she knows. <laughs> okay. Hey, Alex. How was 2024? <laughs> <laughs> I hope your year was full with even more love and adventures than last year. What does home mean to you now? What's mm. something you did this past year that was unexpected? What's something in 2025 that you'd like to continue and something you'd like to stay in 2024? 2025 is just crazy to hear. Right. I like that. Yeah. So love it. That'll be fun for you to actually, like you gave yourself a prompt for next year. Yeah. I'm just like I checking like in with her. Mine's more of a message. So it's just cool to see how we interpret it differently. Yeah. Um, I didn't say, hey, Kristen. <laughs> I just like. You should have. Poor thing. I'm having deja vu right now. As we're talking about writing something to our future selves, oh. I just had deja vu. Yeah, that's that was weird. Um, mine's really short. You have so much more potential than you think, and I hope you see that now. Regardless, I'm proud of you eternally. Oh, I love that. Sweet. Yeah, I hope she likes it. We'll see. Yeah. You should have said hey or something. Oh, right, let me type it. Hey, Kristen. Hey, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, LOL. There. Now she'll be like, oh, okay, she'll my girl. Like, oh, oh. Hey. Uh, okay okay this is for me <laughs> yay Woo! happy 2024 we should have got like streamers, streamers or Pew. like <laughs> or should we, we go classes? out i'm bleeding okay Heavily. so you just don't go out on your period anymore not on day one no no oh I, come on i'm literally like i don't do you want to go out it is Friday. It's Friday. Let's go get a drink somewhere. Okay. Let's go out. Oh, I thought you were about to take it back. Yeah, we can go out. Okay. Yeah, my hair is washed. Yeah, I'm going to boil my diva cup and then we can go out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy New Year, guys. Again, we hope you had a fun and safe and happy holiday. And even if it was shit, like the actual ringing in the New Year, it has nothing to do with how your year is going to go. Yeah. Fuck all that shit of people like... There's no such thing as like bad juju. No. It's January it's a first, day. dude. Like do it up. And honestly, at this point, humanities, we've we've lost count of the days. I guarantee that's not even actually January first, twenty twenty four. Right. Like it could be any year. Yeah. Live in delusion. It's so much easier. And um yeah. Just do whatever the fuck you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. If it doesn't hurt anyone or yourself. Or yourself. <laughs> then do what you want to do. And uh don't overthink anything. Take more pictures. And don't judge yourself if you are overthinking. It's okay. Just reel it in. Yeah. Come back. You'll come back there. to the train station. You can't control everything. No, and you once can't. you accept that, you'll get it. Yeah. You, you guys will get it. You'll get there. <laughs> you'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, guys. We're going to go out, I guess. So. Uh, For Patreon. Oh, yeah. If you follow us on Patreon, 
why don't you um like send us in all of these what are your ins and yeah, outs maybe answer some of these prompts you feel comfortable answering yeah write a letter what are some of these what's your um movie and song of the year let us know love that one yeah and if you're not on patreon as always comment that shit down below yeah love when we talk in the comments on youtube also if you're on youtube subscribe have that be one of your resolutions. I don't know, just subscribe to advice. Subscribe to advice and turn on post notifications. That too. So you know when we post every Monday, typically. For the, prob- I was going to the- say the rest of the year, but we'll probably take a season break. We'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah, way later. Way later. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, also rate us five stars because it's New Year. and Be nice. Thank you. Love Thanks. you guys. Have a good one. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye.